So here is Abraham, a guy who's done dopey things on such a scale that you and I are still being entangled in his dopey behavior. We're talking planet-altering stupidity. Planet-altering stupidity. And yet when God in, in Hebrews, when the writer of Hebrews, in, he's inspired by the Lord, writes about this guy, we don't see any of that mentioned. But instead, we just see this incredible, you know, the, the Lord really gave me a picture of this some years ago. It was, it was like a, a vision that I had. I, I, I wouldn't really... I hesitate to use the word vision because I'm not really the vision kind of person. It was more like a cartoon. <laughs> but I, I had this cartoon that I, was, that I was standing before the judgment seat of Christ. And I was in a line. Jesus was up ahead of me looking strong and robust and, you know, like a carpenter and, and just, you know, and he's up ahead of me and I'm in line. There are people in front of me and, and I, I'm very conscious as I'm standing there that I'm moving into, he's going he's gonna to be judging me. I'm, I'm in line to be judged. And I'm kind of hemming and hawing. And as I'm in line, I'm thinking to myself of all the stupid things I have ever done. And I am thinking, this is not going to be good, right? I mean, even here I am, a minister and everything else, and I've still done all these crazy, stupid, uh, terrible things. And, and, and I'm and it's going lump, and finally, it's my turn. Jesus looks all, big smile on his face and a strong grip, and he reaches out and takes my hand, and looks me in the eye, and says, well, it's judgment day, Mike. And I'm, I'm like, yes, it is. Yes, here we are. <laughs> and he says, uh, he says are, are, you, are you ready? Are you ready? You know, and I'm like, uh, hey, you know, I showed up, you know, I'm, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, he says, well, let me explain to you how this is going to work. He said, uh, what we have done is we have taken pictures at key representative moments of your life. And I've got these photos right here in this box here with me. And he said, what we're going to do is we're going to sit down and I'm going to pull out a photo and then you're going to talk about it, and then I'm going to talk about it. And that's how we're going to, we're going to go through your life. That's how you're going to be judged. And so I'm thinking, this is not good, right? Because as soon as he says, photos of your life, I have like, you know, I have like these images going through my mind, and I'm thinking to myself, this is not, this is not good. So he says, okay, here we are. Are you ready? And I'm going, yeah, okay, okay. And so he reaches in, and he pulls out the first photo. And I'm thinking, this is going to be bad. We're going to, boom. But it's a good moment. It's a moment when I did the right thing. It's a moment when I did the right thing when nobody else was looking. It's like, a, it's like, a, it's like one of those highlight moments of my life. And so, you know, I talk about it. I say, oh, yeah, when that was happening, I was doing this and that. And, you know, I was really concerned. And, and, then, and then he and he says, yeah, and you know what I was doing? And he starts telling me what he was doing, you know. And, and then I'm going, I'm going, really? You were doing that? And we're laughing and we're talking. And, and, and it was like we're taking forever. Like we had forever, you know, really. <laughs> and so finally he says, after a while, finally he says, you want to look at another one? You know, so I said, okay, okay. So he reaches down and he flips out another photo. And it's another great photo. We're laughing and talking and, you know. And then he says, you want to go for number three? Now listen, I've lived my life. There are not three good moments in a row. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I can tell you that. I've never... I've. You know, it's like playing golf. You know, if you get two good ones, you feel pretty good. You know, two good hits. But three hits in a row, it's not happening. You know what I mean? It's not. And that's, you know, I'm, so I'm thinking, well, this is going to be bad now. This is really, you know, and I'm thinking, if I got two good ones, this is probably a really bad one. And he reaches down, he pulls out the photo, and it's another great photo. Photo after photo 
after photo after photo. It's like Mike's mountain peaks. It's Mike's greatest moments. It's Mike's, you know, awesomest times, greatest moments. Photo after photo after photo finally comes to the last photo, and I am terrified because I'm thinking this is going to be the most horrible photo of, you know, it's going to balance out the whole rest of the pile. He pulls it out, another great photo. Now I'm thinking to myself, should I say anything? <laughs> because, you know, this is not right. But then I say to myself, hey, I showed up. I did my part. If somebody messed up in records, that's their problems. You know what I mean? <laughs> And then I think to myself, what if this is the test? What if I go, yeah, okay, yeah, that was great, hey, you know. And then he goes, there you are, Kavanaugh, still trying to pull the wool over people's eyes. Back up the truck with the Kavanaugh photos. I feel, I feel like you do, you know, when you, when you go to a uh, check out at a department store or something and you put your stuff all on the counter, but the girl, when she's checking you out, misses something. And you notice that she missed, but you're kind of torn. <laughs> Should you say something? I mean, I put them all on the counter. You know, they're not paying me to check out. You know what I mean? A, I did my part. But finally, I think to myself, Mike, you might as well get honest, right? I mean, you're all the way, you know, here. It's time to, to be honest, time to be straightforward. So, so I look at Jesus and, you know, I kind of hang my head a little. And I say, uh, I say are there any, any other photos? He says, no, that's it. He looks at me, that's it. That's all of them. He says, were you expecting something else? I said, well, you know, I, uh, I thought, you know, maybe there might be, you know, something else. And uh, he says, uh, he says, uh, he says, well, what, what exactly were you thinking about? And when he said, what exactly are you thinking about? It was like at that moment, an image came into my mind that was so horrible, so real, so exactly representative of all my stupid mistakes. And I began to describe it to him. I couldn't even look at him when I was describing it. My head was kind of hanging down. And when I finished, I glanced up and looked at his face. And he had an expression on his face that I've never associated with Jesus Christ. It was an expression of absolute bewilderment. And he just looked at me and he said, after all of this, you still don't get it, do you? You still don't understand that your sin is as far from me as the east is from the West. That you have been cleansed, absolutely made clean before me. God does not see the way we see. He's, he doesn't accumulate our mistakes. He accumulates the incredible grace, the trophies of his grace that are in our life in decision after decision after decision, born up by the work of the Holy Spirit. And even our failures at waiting, he has covered with his blood. And there will be a day that it will be written of you as it was written in Hebrews 11 of Abraham. 
And, and no one is going to write a word about all the things that are weighing your heart down today. No one's going to write a word about all your stupid mistakes. No one's got to write a word about any of that. There, it's going to be words of the triumphs, of the victories, of grace in your life, of the Lord working inside of you.